This is Anthony Campo, your host of the Be Battle Ready podcast. And on today's episode, I sit down with Brian Key Davis. And Brian and I have been buddies since 2002 when we met playing rugby. We connected then, and you know we've always had a good connection, a good connection since. Someone like brothers from a different mother, but uh, in today's episode, I literally have one of the deepest conversations I've had on this uh, this podcast. We really go deep and, and actually talk for no, for a long time. I know it's a long episode, but bear with it. There's some gems. There's some takeaways that you want to hear from our conversation and the perspective that Brian has, not just on sales. Brian is a master in business-to-business sales. I've heard some of the numbers, some of the things he's thrown down, and it's amazing. But more than anything, it's his perspective on how he's shifted his life to be more inclusive. How, how he basically turned his body on fire, how he got, reconnected his, his relationship with God and his spirituality, and then most, most important, how he lit his family on fire and became connected to them, more connected than before because, you know, being a road warrior in business, business sales, he himself became this, began disconnected, became irritated, just had no connection with his family. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today's episode as we dig down into not just sales, but the rest of your life. All right. Well, thank you for uh, joining us on today's Be Battle Ready podcast. Uh, Today, we're talking about sales with Brian Davis, one of my longtime buddies. Uh, Him and I have gone to war, not on the marketplace together, but we've gone to war on the rugby pitch and... Uh, have had a lot of, uh, have a lot of history. We've been friends for, I think 20, I was 21, 22 when we first met. And, uh, yeah, like, uh, I would say like, I was identified with him as like being a a real, the closest to a brother on the rugby pitch versus just a a brother as a rugby player. So, uh, I want to introduce Brian Davis, uh, my longtime buddy. So I'm going to let you introduce yourself so you can do justice and go from there. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Anthony. Uh, man, it's awesome to be here, and I love your podcast. And this is—I uh, love what you're doing, man. Because uh, there's, you know, there's it's 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 tough to be alone out there, and there's a lot of folks that are out there trying to build something. They're trying to build, trying to build, trying to build, and there's this. It's a really it can be isolating whenever you're building because most of the time, most of the people around you are not building stuff. And so what you're doing relative to battle ready business is actually giving people a place to, to assemble and like be together and not, you know, not, not, not be alone. And, um, and w- once you're running with a pack, you got, you can get m- momentum and you can maybe get that little extra amount of certainty that you need to, to, to take some of the bigger leaps that, you know, can be a little bit scary by yourself. So that's cool what you're yeah. doing, man. I love it. And uh, I appreciate it. But um, yeah, just a little bit about me. I've uh, I'm, I'm a, uh, been in sales and business development for almost 20 years. Uh, my career started in uh, actually was it, it was it was leasing back in the day in a boiler room. 200 guys in Orange County uh, didn't know anything about sales, but just got thrown into the furnace and you know off to the races. It was kind of like being like right inside of it was like the movie Boiler Room. Uh, from there, got into technology and. Uh, software and enterprise software sales and mainly the aerospace and defense industry. And I did that for basically a decade. And then from there, uh, moved into digital marketing. I did a couple of startups. And then now I'm in the business of uh, actually healthcare of all things, selling uh, digital marketing and technology solutions inside the healthcare American hospital industry, um, which is a whole different animal. Um, And then in addition to that, what I've started recently is my own coaching, coaching and consulting business, specifically around the topic of sales and uh, business development, primarily for business to business uh, type salespeople. Uh, and so, across that whole thing, I've, I've definitely, it's definitely been a journey. And the last couple of years have, with the addition of a family, have completely shifted the way I operate. And that's what I'm happy to share some more about today because I find I found that. For, oh, for many years, I thought sales was all about 
what's in your PowerPoint. I thought sales was about having the best product and thought, thought sales was about, you know, beating the competition and all those kinds of things. And in the last couple of years, I found out that it's, it's actually not about any of those things. And so we can talk about some of that today. Yeah, I'd love to, man. Um, you know, I've seen, you know, we've kind of reconnected in the last few years. Obviously, you've moved out of state. We haven't played rugby for a while. But, you know, I've been watching your journey from uh, obviously social media and connecting. And, yeah, and uh, obviously we can talk about some of the other stuff and, you know, how 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 we reconnected and stuff. But, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, man, um, let's let's kind of, like, get into that. Like, what what – What's your overall, like, what, what's the biggest takeaway or biggest thing you've been, you know, that's been a transition or a turning point in your career? Well, I mean, I'd say, you know, the, the one thing I became, became clear about when I moved in, within sales, I moved from, you know, I, I went through all of these different industries. And a lot of times people, salespeople find themselves in an industry and they stay there and they stay there and they stay there. And they kind of get into a story. Well, this, this is what I do. This is what I sell. I'm a such and such salesman. But sales is not, I mean, it, it, it is, if you can sell one thing, you can sell something else. That's the one thing I learned. And I found that I can really go from industry to industry and it doesn't matter. I can give me, you know, give me 1920 days, brand new industry. I can figure it out and I can go. That's probably one of my, my you know, superpowers is that I've proven to myself. What I, what I, what I also though did and found myself doing as I moved from industry to industry is I always had also a story that I may not know as much as everybody else, but I'll just outwork them. And that mindset served me to a point in terms of my numbers, in terms of my results, like I'll outwork the competition that like, that was my, that was my you know, Southern boy. I'm from Louisiana, like farm, farm kid work ethic. Like I'll just outwork everybody. And like, that was, that's kind of you and I on the rugby field. Like that was always like, we're, we're just going to be the best in shape. We're going to be the best, we, whatever. We weren't the like, biggest, we weren't the fastest, we weren't the strongest, but Hey, but you know, we're going to outwork everybody. It, it, that was like, right. And to make, we have to make up for our lack of size, lack of whatever. Like, so I'll just outwork you. And that became my, that became my, my, my operating system. And, and, and I had results. Like I had, it was very you know successful and, and pretty much every, what, not pretty much every place I went, I was successful and a top producer and all that. And I, my story was, well, I'll just outwork everybody. And that worked pretty well right up until the time I got a fiance and then got married and then had one child and then had another child. And it was in that space that I realized that my capacity and my operating system as a sales executive, where I was just going to outwork everybody was no longer going to serve me. In fact, yeah. if, if I continued down that path, it was going to, it was going to destroy everything. Yeah. And, it's like cancer. Yeah. I mean, and I, and I see how it was a self self-sustaining, um, a self-sustaining story because I would do the work and then I'd get the results. But what I had now in the mix was this added, added uh, capacity requirement of a wife and that worked for a while. And I had the story, well, I'm just going to go out and get the money and I'll go out and get the money and she'll be happy if I just, you know, she's got to just suck it up and like, I got to go make this shit, make this happen, you know? Well, cool. And then we have a baby. Okay. Well, I've got a baby. And now what I found, found myself doing was after my first child, any grace was, you know, I found myself eight, eight, nine months into her life, staying up, not because she was awake and needed a bottle, but staying up till four or five in the morning, like multiple nights in a row, weeks on end, because I was doing, I was my, 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 I'm now work. Everybody was still playing. Yeah. And I found myself in a place of probably 25 pounds overweight. Honestly, from lack of sleep, I found myself pro like I got to a point where I'm like, I'm probably doing damage to my brain. Like I'm probably doing damage short-term or maybe long-term damage to my brain. Like this is how people get early onset Alzheimer's is that they, they just, you know, they just, the one thing they're willing to negotiate on and sacrifice is sleep. I'll, I'll just power through. That was my, I'll just power through it and I'll just get it done. Yeah. Uh, I found myself not connected with my wife. I found myself, uh, you know, re really just kind of like scrambling. And that's where I was. 
but I was still getting results at work. And so I looked at the scoreboard and so my scoreboard at work still told me, Hey sales, you're, you're still killing it. Like what? Like I gotta keep going. And then arrived my second daughter and my second daughter, Perry, who is uh, one and a half now arrived. And when she was born, she was born with bilateral club feet. Now, if you're not familiar with that is club feet are when the baby's uh, feet are basically turned uh, turned in at a, basically a 90 degree angle. They don't know why this happens. It's like one in every thousand children have this or something. Uh, but she had both of them and we didn't know this before she was born. So she was born and this was a surprise. Um, so then I had not only two children, uh, but also now cho two children, one that had a physical situation that was going to require some therapy. But so 10 days after her birth, we find ourselves at Scottish Rite Children's Hospital in Dallas, and she's putting on, they're putting on these casts. And they put these casts on, and this baby who had not cried and had been happy for 10 days, over the first 10 days of her life, all of a sudden is crying in pain uh, uncontrollably for basically 48 hours. Like, they don't Man. know, like, the, the child is, you know, she's just in pain, doesn't know why, we can't explain it to her. And so needless to say, as a parent, that's a, that's a beat, like, that's a beating, a spiritual beating. Yeah, and it was in that space that I like, I don't know what exactly happened. I don't know what the situation was. I remember sitting there, baby's crying, Susanna's sitting there, my wife is sitting there and something happened, some crossword, something. And my wife's crying, the baby's crying, my wife's crying because it's her new baby and it's, she's in pain. And I snapped at my wife, like I snapped at her like something. I don't even remember what I said. But it was in that moment that I had to buy back out. And I was like, dude, like who the, what the, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. Like what kind of fucking man are you that you can't hold space to your wife? Who's brand new mo mother crying with a baby that's in pain. And that's that gift, which is, I always will attribute that gift to my daughter, that gift um, from my daughter was what started the change in the trajectory was me going, okay, finally, I realized that my operating system of outwork everybody in sales and outwork everybody and do all that stuff is no longer going to operate. It's not, not going to, it's not, I don't have the capacity to take this on. And, um, it was at that point that I started to, um, really like everything started to shift. Yeah. And so, so I find myself, you know, 18 months later, 16 months later, um, you know, more connected with my wife than I've ever been in better shape, crushing the sales numbers, but doing it in a different way. And I'd say that's, you know, I tell that whole story to get to, you know, get to, you know, from a sales perspective, probably the biggest thing that I've realized is that, uh, it's not the, it's not the PowerPoint. It's not the over preparation, all the over preparation and all the other stuff that I used to do was all a, and all the staying up late and leaving early and getting, you know, flying there a day early to get prep, prep for the presentation and all this extra stuff that I used to do that, that, that was, was very costly to my body, to my marriage, to all those things, that, all those behaviors I used to do um, were all a cover for my lack of personal certainty. And so when I would go into these meetings, I would lack so much personal certainty because my marriage wasn't good. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't that it wasn't good. It was just not where it should be. I never felt comfortable in my body. I was overweight. I mean, I was not fat, but I always, my gut was always over my belt and I was always wearing, you know, suits to hide. You know, I was always subconsciously hiding the way I looked. Those things carried over. And so as a result of that lack of personal certainty, my cover was all of this over preparation, which required me to stay up late and do more work and all this other stuff. And so, and then what, then I'd still get the result. I'd still get the sale. Yeah. But at tremendous cost. And that was the, that was what I realized is that, uh, like that, that, first of all, that's not sustainable. I could continue to do that. And what I saw was a trajectory that if I continue that behavior, if I continued operating that way, I would end up with a very large bank account in 10 years. But I would give away two thirds of it because I'd be divorced. And I'd be 60 pounds overweight. 
I'd be, yeah. sedated, I'd be sedated with, you know, who knows what, porn, whatever. And I would be um, no relationship with my daughters. Just a shell. A shell. And that's, but that's the story of thousands of businessmen out there, or like sales guys right now, right? Somebody on this podcast, you might be an entrepreneur, you might be building something, you might just be a sales guy, right? You might just be somebody that's, and you're probably going to relate to that, like on the airplane all the time, out, you know, on the road, like all that stuff. And that, that, that place of being on the road and all that stuff is, is a huge weight. And it's a huge opening for things that are destructive to enter your life and your marriage and your family. Yeah. I mean, I spent two, two years business development, marketing business development, you know, in, in the commercial real estate space. And, you know, I mean, everybody, the VPs, they're always on the road. You know what I mean? And uh, understanding, looking back, like uh, the gift of not being working there anymore, but looking back of how misaligned everything was, misaligned of my values of who I am as a, as a man, as a husband, as a father, it was, it was an interruption into all that. So, and then seeing the, you know, oh, you can go become a VP and do X, Y, Z. And at the same time, you're on the road, you're traveling around the country to, you know, and you don't see your family. So, I mean, for somebody that's, it's all, it's for them. If they value that, they, they appreciate that, then that's their deal. But for the majority of people, majority of sales and business development, it's just not, it's just not, you know, who are you going to be, you know? But well, the- you can, you can have a great bank account, but at the end of the day, like if you, your kids don't know, you don't know your kids, you don't know your family, you, you just, you're a fat slob, like what, you know? Well, well, what I found what I- is, what, what I found is that, you know, it's, none of those things are necessarily bad things. It's just that there's no operating system to help your average man or woman, I guess, but, but really, I mean, from the perspective of a man is the way I look at it is there's no, there's no operating system to help you through that. It's all about, you know, chasing the quota. And here's the fucking truth. The quota, you're never going to catch the quota because they're always going to move it. Yep. So you, what I've, what I've, what I've moved into, and, and they don't care, like they don't care. They want the results. You're, you're in the, in there to get the results and that's it. Um, and that's the nature of the business. That's fine. Like you got to know that game. But what I found is that there is another game. There's a game above the game, which is that sales is, is not about your PowerPoint. It's not about your product. It's not about any of that stuff. Sales is about the energy that you bring into the marketplace as an individual. And I'll give you an example. I was having a meeting with this, one of the sales teams at my current company this week. And one of the things that I've found is that I am most powerful in a conversation when I have connected with my family and I am connected with my family. I'm most powerful in a sales conversation when my body is on point and I've exercised and my nutrition's on point. And I, I mean, I, I don't even drink anymore. Like not because I've tried to, I'm like, not because I said I'm not drinking, but because I was like, I don't see where that serves me in any way. Um, like any sedation, anything like that. I've like, it's just, I don't, I don't have space for it now. Um, and, and then my spirituality is like bringing God into the game. Like that's been a, that was, that's probably the thing, only thing that kept me going during that, during that, those like the dark time was that I at least had this idea that I was going to bring God into my sales game, yeah. which, I do, which I do. And um, you do those three things, have your body on point, have your, have your, you know, your minds, you, you know, your, your body, your, your, yourself, your physical being is on point. You have your heart on point by having your being connected with your family and using the fire that your family can give you. And then your spirit, your soul on point by connecting with the CEO of the universe and bringing him into the game. Well, the business part all of a sudden becomes an outcome of those three things. What I used to do is have it the other way around was when I get my quota, then I'll take my family on vacation not realizing that it's the family vacation that gives me the certainty to go into a sales conversation with no presentation and nothing other than myself and have a powerful conversation with another human being and, and generate an opportunity for business to happen. Yeah. 
but the world will not will not tell you that. The world will tell you, no, 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 no. you put your vacation off. You got to hit your quota. You got to do this, that, and the other. Like, you got to eat vegetables man. before you have your dessert. You know, yeah. right? It's 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 ingrained. Yeah. So, so yeah. So it's like that's been the biggest shift. Has been this idea that it is about the energy you're bringing into the conversation more than any other aspect, and the energy that's that's pure is your family the fire the gift of your family if god's given you a family here's something i'll pass along this is another big revelation i had men this is to the men and the women your family is not your responsibility your family is not your responsibility most men walk around with this idea that my family is my responsibility here's a news flash god doesn't need you god doesn't need you to take care of your family he can do it what he does is he gives a man a family to expand his capacity to hear his voice. And it was in, and the reason I, for me, that was Perry arriving, my little one with two club feet. That was God talking to me through my family saying, dude, the way you're operating is not going to work anymore. Listen. Yeah. And so like that, that having that part of the game on point is, and then bringing that level of certainty into a conversation is something that the marketplace doesn't see because what makes you competitive is when you show up and you're, you're whole and certain in your, where you are with your family and your body and in your spirituality in a conversation with anyone, uh, it's going to, it's going to feel different to them. And you're going to have the internal capacity to actually open the space, to open, ask questions and shut up and listen intently to uh, another person and give them the space to discover their own answers. Um, and like the other nine people that they talk to are going to do that. Yeah. They're just going to try to, you know, push these benefits, right? So no, they're just selling hard, hard, you know, close them, hardcore close, whatever. I mean, yeah. it, it's, it's not, it's, that's why it, sales is about the energy of attraction and people are attracted to truth. Yeah. And like, that's, uh, we got, I've got a coach that says the most powerful man in the marketplace is the one with the truth or the one with no lies, nothing to hide and nothing to hide. Right. So that's, that is a rare commodity. The marketplace is not full of truth. And so just as a yeah. sales professional, the person that doesn't, I will take the person, I mean, the person can have a, 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 a not as good product, not as good present, you know, presentation, uh, and maybe not, a, maybe a higher price, but can still win if they're coming in with the truth and everybody else is covered in half truths. Yeah. I mean, so th this, this idea, there's a little bit of like controlling the frame, right? In, inside uh, that type of uh, environment if you're going to be pitching somebody but if you have nothing to hide like there, there's nothing like for instance back down to your belt right your, your suit and your belly if you if you don't have anything to hide you don't have to cover up anything that's the metaphor then you could just ha stand and be present and own the energy of the room and saying hey I believe like full honestly believe we are the solution and that in itself, that projection of that energy and that power to the, to the prospect or the potential customer, that in itself is just selling them. Like you're, you're already, you're, you're basically attracting them to you and selling them, you know, which is eventually selling them the product. Well, and, and I mean, it's a great point. So think about this, consider two scenarios. One where I walk in on Monday morning, you know, you, you walk, you flew in Sunday night. But instead of flying in Sunday night, you flew in Sunday morning because you needed to work on your, you had this idea that you need to work on your presentation, 125 slides, like all this whole thing. Because I want to be prepared. Yeah. Right. You show up, a couple of drinks on the plane. You get to the, you know, you have the airplane food, eat again at the place and you get there, get to the hotel, in your hotel room, you're supposed to be working on your presentation. Uh, didn't get your workout in you, you're, you know, you're over, you know, yeah, you got your, you got your gut, your gut that you're going to try to hide tomorrow. You didn't connect with your family before you left because you're like, I got to go out and make this big sale. 
And then, you know, you're in the hotel room and nobody around. So, oh, there's a little, oh, shoot, a little porn, a little porn action because I'm a sedate. Don't want to, you know, really do the presentation. I'll just sedate instead of create. And then uh, the next day you come in and you didn't get a good night's sleep because you stayed up all night. And then you go into the presentation and, and that's, the, that's the energy you're bringing is you're carrying the weight of the literal weight your height you're carrying the 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 mental distraction of is my coat covering my belt that's too tight i'm carrying the guilt and shame of doing things i shouldn't have done i'm carrying the guilt and shame of not connecting with my family before i went and i'm carrying like not my 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 fuel that i put in my body with the, you know drinks I'm carrying that from the day before into that presentation. And oh yeah, then I stayed up all night to make sure I was prepared. Versus the man that shows up, he's fit. Instead of leaving early on Sunday, he leaves the latest flight on Sunday night so he can spend all day not preparing, but connecting with his family, being present with them, connecting with his wife, connecting with his children, flies in, gets a good night's sleep and knows that he can show up with a couple of visuals, but really a powerful conversation. Yeah. Like totally different operating system. Both, you know, both, both operate, both of those may end up, the guy still may end win the sale on both sides of that, but one of them is way more costly. Yeah. I mean, I, that's what I was going to dig into. Is like, people might say, well, I don't need to go do all this stuff with myself. I can just continue to, this is producing results. Like that's where people are going to get stuck is like, Oh, it's producing results. What I'm currently doing is producing results. First of all, if you need 125 slides to, to present something, you're, you're okay. Maybe you might be a little bit better than the other guy with 127, but like you should be able to get that done in like less than 20 slides. Right. right. At the end of the day. Uh, but again, like long-term costs, like you can look at what, what the short-term benefit is and it reinforces, Oh, this is the way to do it. But long term, it's just going to destroy your life. Look, I, like I said, I, I knew that my old trajectory, was, like I said, I was going to end up in 10 years. Um, it was all going to be burned down. And so, but what I found is, is this operating system and operating with that mindset first, you still have the results. You actually have better results. Yeah. So let's and, talk about the philosophy behind this and where you – where you're coming from and what, what, what was the transition point when you actually were like, you know, obviously something that there was a awakening with, with your daughter, but when did you find like, Oh, there's a different way, right there. It was like, like a car wreck is like, Oh shit. There's a different way. You well, know? that's, that's, I'm, I'm part of a, a organization called wake up warrior um, that I saw a video. They have a whole, it was, that was what it was talking about body being balanced and business how can you make all these things work together? And um, I got involved in that organization, became a certified trainer in it, and I'm building a practice around that within the specifically for salespeople, uh, business to business salespeople, the guys on the airplane. Um, and what I found is that that it's it's basic, you know, that that's basically where I found this this science. It's science, it's not it's not even philosophy. It's science. It works, um, and it really is the things we're talking about. And it's it's simple, but it's not easy. It's have your body on point. Let's have your spirituality on point. Have it connect with your family. And then the business comes. And um, those are the things, this, this, in, this inversion of, of that philosophy is, is the old way, which is hit your number, blow out your number, blow out your number, chase your quota, you know, do all this stuff. Um, and, you know, your family that you think about your family and all this stuff secondary. And there's just thousands of guys that that's exact. I've seen them. I've been around them. I've been the guy. There's thousands of guys that are like that. And, um, and so the warrior program warriors way has been, has been, uh, has been a, a life changer for me. It's been a trajectory changer. Uh, and I've seen it change uh, lots of other men. So I'm, I'm committed to continue to broadcast that message as well. And awesome. Know some, you know, you've, you've been, you've been a part of too. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so let's give some people some, some takeaways, like, you know, like what, what would it be that, you know, sales guy, 
you know, would need to do, you know, what would, how can he put himself in that state, you know, to be what I call battle ready because, you know, yeah, well, I mean, I think there's a, I think there's a few, there's a few things. Um, one is knowing that is acknowledging that what you are actually bringing to a business conversation is energy. Like this is like, this, we don't need to turn this into like, uh, you know, like hippy dippy, uh, like new age, new age podcast, but it's true. Like your energy is everything. And like the, like the energy you bring into a business conversation has more impact than anything else. Um, and so there are places that you can get that energy and there's places where you leak that energy. Um, places where you leak that energy, things that, things that sedate you, things that are forcing you to not look at it. Places you leak that energy are lies and secrets inside your marriage. If you have lies and secrets inside your marriage, you are using energy to cover those things. Don't have lies and secrets inside your energy, you're inside your marriage, you're freed up to actually go out and like do battle at a new level because you're not expending the energy to cover things. Um, if you're not connected with your family, you're not connected with your children, you're not, you're not dating your wife every week, those things all leak energy because you're always, you're always trying to like, you're trying to do business and you're trying to like make my wife happy rather than constantly invest in these areas. And if you're not, it's like you, either, you're either investing in the area or you're leaking energy in the area. And so, you know, simple things you can do on your body, sweat every day, whatever you do, sweat every day on your body, make sure your nutrition's on point. Like look at what you eat and how, and how you eat. I mean, Anthony, you got a big background in those, both those areas. I'm sure that your listeners and I mean, and your, your folks that you work with get a good dose of that how yeah. important your body is and in, in, in part of the, in that aspect of the game. I mean, one of the things that was a big turning point, cause while I was running my gym and building that and going in business when I was early on, like no one, I, you know, I didn't have a dad to tell me how to do that. You know, he was gone already. You know, I didn't have any mentors. I was figuring everything out on my own. And one of the things that I just, I was inspired one day just to hire a coach to learn more, about fitness and I started training hour and a hour, hour and a, hour to hour and a half a day, five, six days a week. Yeah. And the amount of um, mental capacity that I got out of that, but on the other side of like, even though I wasn't like studying scripture or anything like that, I, I it was like my church that that was like going to church for an hour and a half every day because you know, like, when you're lifting heavy shit and you're trying to hit numbers, and you're trying to push that barrier. Like you've got to go into the darkness, right? Where you don't, and it's not necessarily like this dark sadness, but it's this place where you don't know if you come out of it, if you're going to be able to come out of it. Right. If you're going to throw amount of weight on the bar that you just might get buried. Right. And you've got to actually, you walk up that bar and you're nervous as fuck. Like there, it's such like, the, the element of training, and if you could just take the frame and the, the uh, viewpoint inside, and you went and trained like that, lifted heavy shit, went hard at stuff, and, like, really got into that, like, like it's such a microcosm. It can teach you so much about other areas of your life. Yeah. Because, like, it, you, know, there, the, you know, there's been some point, points when it's been, shit's just been fucked up. Right. But if it wasn't for that, that time of like really mentally having to push through and like tell people, Hey, dude, it's Saturday and I'm, I'm going to go train. Like there's a lot of lessons to be learned. Once you commit to something like that, like I would take weights. We'd have to go down to, to, to we go to stay in hotel rooms for like competitions or do whatever. But I would, you know, I would have to go somewhere else. And I was like, well, how am I going to train? I'm going to, you know, how am I going to do this? Uh, so I bring shit in the back of my truck and go in a parking lot. Like there's so much that I learned from that, just from that commitment level to getting that part of it done. Well, you bring up a part there that's something I've realized recently, that part of the going into the darkness. Um, a lot of sales organizations try to motivate people with, you know, either, Hey, hit the quota and you get a bonus or, Hey, hit the quota or you're going to get fired. Like I've seen both sides of that. 
like, you know, all the time. And when you're, you were submitting as your as a salesperson to someone else's frame, like basically that's what you're saying. When you're letting them motivate you by, Hey, there's a carrot at the end of the stick or there's the stick that's going to whack you if you don't hit your numbers. That is no place to operate. That's a shitty place to operate. Like you're always chasing, you're always submitting to somebody else's frame and that is not a powerful place to be. And so you bring that energy into your conversations as well. It can be a desperation. It's either a desperation for the bonus or it's a desperation. I don't want to get fired. Well, guess what? That fucks you in the conversation. But what you I bring this back to the darkness piece, like your family, like part of the darkness, what you're talking about is the, is the warrior spirit is the, the darkness that especially a man, I can't speak to women on this, but like what a man goes to, like, think about your family and somebody going after them. Like that's a, you, if this is not a, this is not a, a negative thing either. A lot of times modern culture will tell you, we'll get angry and darkness and men shouldn't get all enraged and all this stuff. That's bullshit. Men were built to have anger and rage. And guess what? Scripture says God got in, God gets angry too. So anger is a, is, is a, is a quality of God. It's a quality of man. It should never be suppressed. It just needs to be focused. The, the darkness that I think you're going to, especially in, in what comes out, like in a man, a physical workout will take you there, right? Because you're like, dude, I'm, it's like, and, and what I've found, one of the practices that I do now is like, I, I imagine my children and my wife during the last sets of my workout. Like, I always put a game in my head of like, I, like my wife or my child is in chains and I, every rep breaks a chain. And I go like my little one with the two feet. She wears these, she, she wears with the, with the braces. She wears these braces that have, that have two buckles on each side. And I, I mean, this is sound weird to listeners, but what I do in my last five reps is every rep unlocks one of her, her locks on her ankles. And the final rep is a kiss on her head. And that's my final <laughs> five reps. It's a nice. funny game, but I don't want to let her down. I always get the five reps, no matter how yeah. tired I am. Right. But it's a darkness. Like it's a pissed off. It's like, fuck, I, she's not, I'm not letting her stay in these chains and that darkness, that power. Yeah. That's the, that's the fire that when you bring that into your sales game and you're like, I'm going to hit such and such. I don't give a fuck about your quota. I'm going to hit that because I've got the fire. I'm going to put like for my family, I'm going to go take that down. That's a different frame. Like when your conversations and how you're operating and how you're working and doing your calls and doing your presentations, <laughs> When you're putting your family and your, you're coming from your heart, not your ego. And the sales guy that does that, dude, he's deadly. He's deadly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, like, you know, last, last year when I, I kind of switched positions in the co in that company I was working for and I was like, fuck yeah, man. Like, this is like, it's game day. Right. And you know, they had their own ideas about like, I would, you know, I bring and be of deals back, cut, you know, dealing with that management piece and like cutting you off and then they, you know, whatever. But with the beginning of this year, I actually uh, was uh, like doing the warrior book. Right. And like fucking like I went after it, dude. And it was, it was just a different place. Right. When you, when you're like, you're after it from not from that desperation or from ego, but you're just after just to take down a mission, like, it's it's pretty incredible, you know, place to be, you know. Well, and it's and it's alignment you know, fire to your, having that flow, you know. Yeah, and it's a, and it's a daily alignment to your to your why. That's what I'm saying. Man, your family is your biggest gift. Like your family, you if you sit here and you look at I got to go produce for my family, you're full of shit. Like. Your family is what gives you the capacity to go produce huge shit. The fire that your family gives you. You never had, you never thought you could love something as much as you do your family. Like men, the ones that are listening. Like your children, your daughters, your sons, your wife. If you think about how much you love them. Before they were there, you didn't know what that felt like. You didn't have that. That's a fire. Like you would die for them. You would go, some, somebody coming in your house, trying to get your family, dude, you're going to like your dark warrior. Okay. Well, that same fire can be brought into your business. And the, the, as long as, but as long as you're thinking, I got to go do this for them, meaning I got to do this because they're my responsibility. You're all, how, 
how do you treat a weight or a burden versus how do you treat a gift? So if you shift the frame on your family from a burden or a responsibility, yep. responsibility is a dressed up way of saying burden to a divine gift from God that I don't deserve, but I was given through grace. And if I listen, my family is trying to tell me things, not from them, but in my, my, my reality, God is always speaking to me through my family. Whether yeah. it be the situation, whether it be the club fee, whether it be what my wife says, whether it be what my children tell me, whatever the situation is, I'm always looking for that now. And that is one of the most powerful things that a salesperson can bring into the conversation. Hey, look, if you don't get these things right, like the things that you're talking about on your show, like and things you're talking about with like your body, with your spirituality, with your marriage, like if you don't get those things right, I mean, I can sit here and give you all my sales tactics. I can sit here and give you all of my sales like processes and how I do questioning and how I do notes and how I do presentations and owning the frame and all that stuff. But if you don't get the underlying piece read it right, it doesn't matter. That's the problem with most sales training today is that it all teaches tips and tricks and tactics and things and little how to close and the Ben Franklin close, all this stuff. And it doesn't try, there's no, re, re, there's no re-engineering of the man underneath. Yeah. And so, you know, my, 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 uh, you know, my, my frame on the, the stuff, the stuff I'm building is that if you want better salesmen, you got to have better men first. Yeah, man. I started off, I mean, really when I conceptualized this like kind of battle ready, you know, framework of, of what that is. I mean, it is a lot of just tactics. It's really when you apply to your business, what's your strategy and tactics, right? Yeah. You know, and then as I realized, I'm like, fuck, I've got to back up and I've got to, you know, take all that I learned, you know, for the 10, 10 years plus 15, whatever you want to say, almost 20 years of, of fitness and what I learned in that and like, okay, well, we got to start with the individual, right? Right. And as Warrior talks about being in a place of power, you know, and then rolling that into your business, you know, I mean, um, a simple, you know, basically battle ready business is a pro is providing a simple framework, right. To go baby, go to war in the marketplace and your marketing sales and systems in, in the, the actual daily battles that you need to do. Yep. That's great. And the reason why it's there is to be efficient and effective. So you can continue to grow because as you talk about software, right. And I was trying to, I was sitting down trying to type this up and really like kind of, um, get this a clear message of, you know, us as individuals, we, we come across this conversation of mindsets and skill sets. And really, I, you know, an analogy of that is our hardware and our software. And you talk about that. And the software is actually the production of what comes out. You know, as you know, with your computer, the bigger the software program you put in, if you don't have the hardware to back it, you don't have the capacity to do that, then it's just going to break your computer, right? Memory like storage, RAM, like you think about that. But so to run better software, you've got to have a bigger machine. Yep. So it's this, di this is back and forth relationship. So in your business, I could, we could build you a great business, but at some point, and I'm, li I'm listening to Brendan Burchard's like high, you know, habits book right now. Like and he was talking about like hustling and getting to a point and, like you can hustle your ass into that and it goes back to salespeople. But then if you don't have the habits and the AK mindsets and the skill sets to continue to grow that, you're just going to hit a wall and break down. Yeah. So, you know, if you don't get yourself built, right. And you want, you need your business efficient so that you can improve yourself. Then you can improve yourself and your business gets become bigger. So your business is just a reflection of you. Right. I mean, your business is just a reflection of you. And and so then it is to me, it is just a game of constant investment and constant investments and certainty. Like if you're going to go, if you're building a business like you need, you need freaking certainty. I mean, that is an uncertain game, like to, just to build stuff. You're going to have to take leaps. You're going to have to take, you know, you have to walk in faith that things are going to do certain, you don't know that because there's a lot of you're, you're in the void. You don't really know what's going to happen next as much as you might want to plan. But, but if you can constantly invest in your own personal certainty and power, 
then a lot of the things that that might have otherwise been a a challenge are are gonna are gonna take care of themselves because you're not also trying to fight a war at home, right? Building a business and trying to make my wife happy. Building a business and trying to connect with my children. Building a business and you know trying to trying to stay fit. <laughs> or like right? cover. Like, I mean, it's not really trying to stay fit. It's really covering up the fucking shame and the guilt that you feel like literally that's what you're covering. Yeah. And you, how can you be powerful if you don't walk into a conversation like that? Well, and then, uh, what it is, is a complete, good. Well, what I was saying is like, you know, in the last six months, I've really dug down into right. Doing what the, the, the strategy, you know, the, the actual routine that we're doing and, you know, running a business from home, you don't come into physical contact with people but I went and talked to some lady at the chamber and I was like and I was sitting there I'm like there's something different like just the way that I sat there it wasn't cocky it was just this like I and it's it's weird that you have this big sword right and you know you haven't gone to war with it you haven't taken it into battle so I go sit down with this lady and she's like she started complimenting on this stuff and I'm like oh okay I get it you know what I mean like like going into this and, and having this, it's external force that's with you, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. And, and that's, that is the, that's the whole game is just, is just a constant investment in certainty. But that's also where like, and I think for your listeners, that's for, that's like, that's why battle ready business. That's why your coaching services. That's like why I have, that's where, that's where a coach comes in. Cause it, like it's one thing to know what to do. It's another thing to do what you know you should do. And if you don't have leverage on yourself, like it's really hard to do it totally solo. And I mean, you can put leverage on yourself, like with, uh, with, you know, targets and stuff that you write on the wall and all this kind of stuff. But a lot of times it takes paying money to a coach to get leverage on yourself. So you do, will do what you need to do. Like that's for me personally. Like I got that, like I, that was one of the biggest things with starting investing in coaching. That, that, that since you're, you were both coaches, right. And really kind of on your side, like one of the biggest objections, like, I don't need a coach. I don't need this. I don't need that. Right. And I was going to actually just say, Hey, like, let's talk about that because right. Like, well, here's the thing. Let's, here's my frame on. I don't need a coach. Dude, even Michael Jordan had a coach. Even Michael Jordan had a coach. Because the value of a coach is that a coach does a couple of things. Number one is they mirror for you. When I say mirror, they give you a mirror that they can stand up in front of you that will allow you to see things that you can't see yourself, your blind spots. That's what a good coach really does, is they're a mirror. They say they look. They, they they allow you to stand there and see yourself, and then see the blind spots that you can't see. Like when you stand in front of a mirror after you get out of a shower, you can only see one side. Can't see the whole thing. Even if you had multiple mirrors, there's still some angles you can't see. That's one of the benefits of the coach. And a lot of times, it's in that angle, it's in that hidden area, that are some of the most powerful insights that are the trajectory changers. It's the business move. It's the slight redirection and strategy. It's the warning of against a a potential threat. It's all those things. That's what you're paying for from a mirror perspective. The second part though is leverage. Like dude, men, like there's a reason rugby teams have coaches. They don't, it's not just 15 guys that go play. Now we like back in our day, we definitely played some teams that like we're just 15 guys and we destroy them. And then there was a couple of seasons there where it was kind of like we were 15 guys and like we got destroyed. Well, I mean, um, I remember that because generally that, that organization had a, a loose structure and there was a coach that was there a lot, but he was very lazy affair. He didn't command respect of the players because he wasn't a powerful person. But when shit, when we fucking turned it around and it became like this, was when a powerful coach, even though he was, a, he was an asshole, he was a hothead, you know, he fucking took over. He just said, he had a, he had a, he had, this is where we're going and this is what we're doing. Uh, <laughs> I mean, those were, those were a couple good years that were a lot of dude, fun. Uh, dude, uh, look, I, I, I want, like, let's, give, let's give a shout out to Coach, coach Randall Clark on this. Yeah. Uh, dude, uh, still one of the best coaches I've ever had. 
at, at the time, yeah, there was people like, we, we hate this guy, all this kind of stuff. But here's what, here's the thing. <laughs> he, his whole thing was, if you can't handle the, if you can't handle the practice, you can't handle the game. Like yeah. this is, this is, this is, it was, and it was, um, that's what a coach does though. Like he puts leverage on people so that when the game time comes, you are certain in yourself, right? If you could handle his practices, then you know, come Saturday, you are confident. You are certain. You're not worried about your fitness. You're not worried if your guys are prepared. You're not worried if you're going to make the tackle. You are playing open and free because the practice was so tough and gave you the certainty on Saturday. That's really what he was doing. Now, a lot of people don't like that because certainty and gaining certainty requires you to do shit you don't like to do or it's painful or requires different behaviors, different patterns, all that kind of stuff. But like, that's what a good coach does. Now, there's a bunch of shitty coaches out there. There's a million business coaches. There's a million personal coaches. And they're like, it's yeah. not like they, we could go, they could probably get us get off on a whole tangent on that. But, I, but <laughs> yeah, bro. But, I, I mean, but, in this conversation, what you're talking about, because I, you know, I've, I've dealt with coaches and shit and they call themselves coaches. And I go back to that time dealing with Randall and then where I came from in my like, my transitional during high school was like, dude, I, I probably had one of the fucking best coaches in America, like football coaches in America. Like, I did too. You know, you know, like as from a, a fucking mindset and building you because you say warrior, we were fucking warriors then. Like we used to fucking get into part of our routine, our, our rituals before the game, we would get in the middle of the fucking locker room and be like fucking warriors and mosh pit before we go into fucking battle. So like, and he would talk to us in this sense, like, uh, warriors fucking deal with adversity. Warriors rise to adversity. So he built this personal view and this worldview of who we were, right? And I'm just understanding the psychology around this now. But I'm looking at coaches in the marketplace now of, of really being like, hey, dude, I, like, I did this eight-figure bullshit. And there was, a, there was a question posted inside a group the other day about, oh, do you need to be this, like, badass businessman to be a coach? I'm like, I get the fucking marketplace says that like they, they, that's what they think. But if we look at the sports, right. We look at Bill Belichick, like he fucking can't throw a football like Brady. He can't do what his players did, but he's a damn good coach. And yeah. somehow he leverages fucking players and his team, and his organization and puts this, 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 this army together to go to war. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's about putting together a space and being able to hold the space for another man to where, he can a find his own answers, see a mirror, and then be able to know that that man is in, has his best interest at heart, and is actually going to hold him accountable to do the shit he knows already that he needs to do. Like I can't tell you how many times in the last year and a half where I've had some very powerful coaches. Uh, the only reason I did it was because my coach challenged me. Like the house that I this back this this office that I'm in right now, the house that I live in came down to one conversation with my coach. This, this house is like, we were in a, we were in a, uh, so it was four people, two little babies, three dogs, oh, <laughs> three dogs in a, in a little house just down the street here. I always had idea, the idea that I was going to, you know, I was always going to buy under what I could afford and, and all this kind of stuff. And that's what we'd done. But like, we got in a situation where the house was just not like my, my office was in our bedroom. It was a, it was a shit show, total pressure, constant pressure on like all the dogs would bark and wake up the baby, all this stuff. <laughs> and I had this like thing and this, there was a house that came available down the street. And I mean, it's like, I mean, it's, it's a lot of money. It was like a million dollar house. It's like, I'm like, I'm, what am I? what am I thinking? Like I buy, or I don't need all that house. I don't need all that house. That was, that was my mindset. I don't need all that house. And that's when my coach stepped in and he said, Hey man, and this is coach Jesse Ewell, a wake up warrior. He was a legendary coach. And he says, Hey man, like nobody's served by you playing small. Fuck. He got me. Yeah. It was that one statement from my coach that put that in my mind and it was that that said, what are you waiting on? Do you think you're going to do less in the future than more? Does, doesn't your family deserve those experiences that that space will buy now? 
Okay, fast forward and we got, got the house. It's given me the place, space to create. We've got a great place where the children can play. It's safer, it's, everything's better. But it was that, I say that whole story to say it was that inflection from a coach that gave me the personal like kind of little extra nudge to go and pull the trigger on something that if I had been alone, I would have never done it. Yeah. It's funny that you talk about that because um, I, you know, I look for that coach, right? I've been running alone for a long time. Right. And just, there's these times that I step into that void, like literally, you know, and it's really kind of allowing you to hear God's voice. And I'm going to tell you this because as you were talking, like you're really, your real ultimate coach is God because when when we moved here, right, uh, leading up to this, when, before we moved here, we were, you know, one of the reasons it, it was just a better place to live. You know, we're like, oh, we can get a, we can get a house. We can do this other stuff. Not that we couldn't get a house. We just weren't inspired to get a house in California because yeah. everything's already been built. It's 60 years. It's however many years old. Like I've owned those houses. I wasn't really inspired. But we come in this new area and we're looking at houses. We're doing this and we fucking come here on Saturday. We go and look at all these houses. And literally it was just like, fuck it. Let's go do that. Like, and the biggest thing of either if I've provided success for myself or not provided success. And we were, this came up a little bit earlier in the conversation. We, I, I was wanting to talk about, but it was to say yes to that or say no to those situations. Right. Is it your head? Is it your heart? Right. And in that, like, that's the ultimate battle. And that's what a coach is going to help you see at the end of the day, regardless of strategies, tactics, whatever the fuck it is, it's that it's seeing when and where to say yes to that, that, that stepping into that void and not stepping in that void. Because I was thinking earlier, I would want to ask this question. Have you experienced more loss or more failure by hanging out in the void and allowing the void to become the light eventually, or jumping into the void and jumping out of the void back to where you were? And I want to have you, everybody consider that the success and failure within their life is for them to jump into their void and get fucking terrified and jump out. And there's more, there's more consequences that way than jumping into that void and holding space in it and continue to walk and allowing that void to become light, that, that darkness to become light. Amen. End yeah. of the day. Yeah. And that's, yeah. No, if, if, you, if you're, if you're jumping in and out, you're just in a, in a loop. You're just in a loop and you get the false lift of, Oh, I'm out. Hey, I'm out. I was in it and I'm out. Oh, yeah. cool. Everything's better, but you really didn't go anywhere. And that's a terrible place to be. It is about going in and walking and like continuing on. And that's where, look, walking in the void by yourself is, is, uh, is shitty. There's no reason you have to. That's what a good coach gives you somebody to walk with you. So one last topic, because I know that this is something that, you know, regardless of what they decide to do moving forward, walking into the void, th this is a big topic because how bringing that back to your family, because what I've experienced is being this being, this person who understands that void, right? And jumps into there and does it with fucking, you know, it's just my mom's a, my mom's a person who threw shit against the wall and they figured it out. So that's where I got that gift from, right? But coming back to people that don't understand that, right? Yeah. So, and bringing that back to your family because a guy can go out and try to do this, but is it really going to, right? You, you having the faith and belief in yourself and in what you've been called to do in a macro sense, in a micro sense, in a meso sense, right? So middle, big, middle and smaller things, right? Yeah. So, you know, what have you experienced? I mean, was your wife supported? Like, for instance, let's use your house as an example. Like, was your wife in that frame of like, oh, it's too expensive versus like you had to tell her, honey, we've got to go do this. Or was she like, yeah, let's go do it. Like, what no, was no, that? Was, was, this, this, I mean, I want to use this as a, as a, a teaching moment for for the sense of like, you know, there, there's either two people, two ways that your partner is going to go. So yeah, I've been telling you to do this for a while and you need to go do it or, Oh shit, I'm scared too. And I'm not sure about it. Right. Well, that's, I mean, that brings up a really very, very powerful thing. Um, 
it's probably worth a whole nother podcast around uh, around the family and like your 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 approach there as a man. I mean, as a man, it's your job to lead your family. That may trigger some people, but that's my belief. Not that the not that your wife is not a leader within it, but ultimately, like it's your like it's it's your kingdom to to grow and protect. And your queen is a partner in that. But dude, it's at the end of the day, buck stops with you, not with both. There's no co-captains on a ship. There's one captain. But in a lot of marriages, a lot of scenarios, that's like that's not like because the man has not been leading, then there's a lot of, you know, if you don't have that on point, your business is, I mean, it's going to be tough in your business. But, but, but if you have the internal certainty to be able to take something on like that, and in the house situation, it wasn't like, hey, we're going this way. The difference that for me in that situation was, Hey, we're going this way. I know it's right, but it's also scary. And she said, I'm scared too. I'm scared too. Being willing to admit that I was scared about it. Like, I don't know what I was scared about. In hindsight, I don't know what I was scared about. We sold the other house. It's been fine. But like at the time I was vulnerable enough to say, I, in that void, vulnerability is a void. And this is probably this is probably the topic to kind of leave people on. And this is what this works in sales too. This is this is key to sales. Is vulnerability is the access point to the heart for anybody. Your prospects, your clients, your wife, your partners, vulnerability. Most people are not genuinely vulnerable with other people. Least of all their wife. And because on this conversation of void, being vulnerable is to step into a void because you don't know what the other person is going to do. You're literally saying, I'm going to walk out on this platform into the void, no net. And I don't know if you're going to laugh at me, ridicule me, judge me, whatever else, but I'm going to walk out there regardless. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to show you, like, I'm scared. I'm going to show you my, my, like, if there's something I've been hiding or lying about, all those kinds of things, I'm going to be vulnerable. Modern culture and everything would tell you, you know, stiff upper lip, be a man, all this kind of stuff. That ability to walk into the void and be vulnerable, that's what being a man is about. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what being a leader about is about. Like, there you know, my major was in leadership, right? And, and this whole conversation has been in my head, right? About that. And the, the, the societal construct of, and framework of what a leader is and what it should be is, is kind of, you know, I get it. But at the same time, what, it, what would be the possibility if as a leader, you said, hey, we need to go do this. Like on a macro sense, you 10,000, 20,000 people following you. And you're like, look, here's the mountain we've got to climb and tell, I'm telling you, I, you know, it, there's a lot of uncertainty out there. Right. I don't, you know, this is the best, best path that, you know, uh, I'm not the one that to provide you the path. I want to rally you guys up to help provide that path and roll your team, you know, and, and be vulnerable in that sense in that, you know, saying, Hey, it's going to be scary. I am scared. I think that's a more powerful point because I think what it does, it'll trigger, the people, the good people, because there's going to be people in there and be like, oh, you're weak. They're going to view that frame and they don't need to be on your fucking team at the end of the day. I'd rather run with a, a leaner, meaner, more powerful team than a fucking got people like that and trying to pan- pantser to those people. You know, hey, the mountain's big. It's fucking treacherous. I'm pretty nervous about it. You know, there's fear inside of me, but we're going to go do it anyways. I need you guys to get on the team and help me figure this out. Right. I heard a quote, someone shared a quote with, uh, about Ronald Reagan It's like, hire good people and get out of the way. You know? And I think great leaders do that. Great leaders don't burden themselves just like in your family. You take that to your family. Well, it's, it's so to me, what vulnerability is, 
vulnerability is going first. And what I mean by that is not waiting for someone else to expose themselves or to open up before you open up. You having the, the capacity to know I'm going to open up and people may judge me and my wife may judge me and all this kind of stuff. We'll have another conversation on the wife judging you because on a side note, men, we all underestimate the capacity of the grace of our Queens. We, I hope you all write that shit down. All men underestimate the capacity of the grace of their Queens. We all have a story that she won't think this or she won't do that. Look, our Queens want the damn truth more than anything. And the truth is we're here in this spot and we are vulnerable about how we're feeling and we're scared and whatever, and we're uncertain, but this is how I feel. And we're going this way and whatever, like that's what they want. They have more capacity. These are women can give birth to children. They have capacity. They have capacity to deal with our bullshit too. That's my only message on that. They have the capacity to fucking for a, man, a bunch of men just to bail out and they, they'll take it. They'll take on the challenge and they'll figure it out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Women always adapt to it. So they're like, yes. So my, but my point with vulnerability is vulnerability is about going first and being willing to, uh, to go out there and walk on the beam with no net, regardless of what might happen. But leadership is going first. So vulnerability is leadership and leadership is vulnerability. And the reason is that that vulnerability accesses the heart. And whenever you have put yourself in that position, people are following you, not from their ego or not because you have a big quota on them, not because you're their boss, not because you're paying them. They're following you because they, they've, you've connected with their heart. And that's the people that will go, go to war with you. That's the people that you'll put the phalanx up and the shield will be next to you and you know he's not going to let it down because he's fighting for you. That's why our rugby team those couple of years was really good because we were not – we were fighting for each other. We didn't have a huge squad. We had like 25 guys and we still won a bunch of games. It's because we were fighting for each other and it came out of the crucible of a really good coach, really good you know, set of, set of disciplines, and the, the connection to – like, dude, I don't want to let that guy down. That's why some of us were willing to, to follow that guy, follow Coach, Coach Randall. Uh, and the ones that did, we, were, we had results. So it is a huge 80-20 rule. Like, it's a huge Pareto curve on this stuff. Is that, you know, it's always going to be like, at any given point, there's only going to be 20% of the people doing 80% of the production. Yeah. And it's just a question of the people that are out there, you making a decision that I want to be in the 20% because the people that are in the 20% didn't land there accidentally. They've chosen to go over there. One of the things you can do as a business person is get some other help on your team, get a coach, get some other ex perspectives, give yourself an advantage. And those are, those are the people that make those decisions, make those investments in certainty to get themselves into that 20%. Nice. Cool, man. We went way long, but, uh, dude, I think this is probably the most powerful conversation I've had in months, <laughs> but on this podcast, definitely. Um, and yeah. I think a lot of people are going to provide value. I think, you know, there's probably a follow up to maybe d digging down into that personal development piece and, and all that, maybe even leadership piece, but yeah, sure. we'll continue on, man. I, I, I truly appreciate it. And I truly appreciate you and who you've become and who you are. And, you know, the value that you're providing to the, not just your family, but the people around you and leading uh, a movement within the business development community. So thank you, brother. Yeah, I man. appreciate it, man. And uh, I love what you're doing. Like this is a, uh, you, you're building, you're, you're building a place where again, goes, I just go back to those business owners that, you know, are like, they know in their heart, they're called to build. Like that's what, that's what our country was built on. That's what, you know, that's what everything like that's 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 like a call that's what men were called to create even in the garden of eden god said didn't say sit around he said go work the garden and grow some stuff and create and so it's natural for us to feel that call to build stuff and in many cases what men want to they want to build a business and that builds our country i mean it's the right thing it's awesome but yeah. it is bloody it is a damn battlefield out there and that's why this this idea of 
being battle ready as you go into that is so important. And like having you on their team, I think it's a huge advantage. So it's, it's just a matter of like, do you want to go in with an advantage or do you want to go in not with an advantage? And uh, I think that's why giving some folks some options to be able to have that on their team is, uh, is fantastic. You know, I was having a conversation earlier in the week with a new entrepreneur. I mean, the guy, you know, he's a warrior. He's a true warrior. You know, he's double amputee. You know, I haven't dug down to the story, but, you know, um, one of the, and I, we, the conversation came down to the two, the two biggest things, the two biggest pains and struggles that you can have as an entrepreneur is knowing what to do what you need to be doing right now and feeling alone and having, you know, that, like that, that space for your, your mind to be in, like be around people, you know, that can support you in that. So that's about what business is all about, right? Yeah, man. That's all you need. <laughs> Two things, just fucking just a scorecard and, you know, a couple of battles to go take on and then just the support to go fucking kill it. Good stuff, brother. All right, brother. I appreciate you. And uh, I thank you again for being on this. And I look forward to talking to you soon. My pleasure. Take care. Later. See you, brother. All right, brother. All right. That wraps this week's episode of the Be Rattle Ready podcast. Brought to you by Battle Ready Business. If you're an aspiring entrepreneur or current business owner, and you'd like to take your business to the next level, Go over to BattleReadyBusiness.com to apply for a complimentary one-on-one Battle Ready strategy session. During this session, we'll take a deep dive look into where you're at, where you want to go, and come up with the fastest path for you to build a multi-six-figure Battle Ready business. So go over to BattleReadyBusiness.com to apply for that strategy session, and I look forward to supporting you.